In this video, I'm going to show you nine useful tips and tricks for Blender that you might not know. If you're a beginner, I think you'll get lots out of this one. And if you're more advanced, hopefully there's at least a couple of things in this one that will make your life easier when you're using Blender. So let's get started with number one here. Okay, so for the first one, I showed this in one of my recent videos, but in case you haven't seen it, here's the hidden movement controls that are useful for snapping objects together perfectly. So say we have a cube here, and I want to snap this cube perfectly to the surface of this one. There is a way to do it where we can just go in here, go to front view, line it up like this, zoom in all the way, line it up further, zoom in a level further and do that. You can do that and it's there's nothing really wrong with that except that it's just annoying. The way I like to do it is say we have a cube and it's just offset kind of randomly over here and I want to perfectly align it to this one. You can actually hit G and then I'm going to hit B after that, okay? That puts you into this new snap mode where if you look where my cursor is or my uh, mouse is, it's letting me choose any vertex in the entire scene. So I can actually just click on the corner of this cube right here. That lets me add a snap point and I can actually snap it to any other vertex in the entire scene. That means I can put it right on there if I want to do that or over here or on the corner, wherever I want. So it's really useful for stacking stuff or getting objects perfectly onto the floor. Like if I just want to have this on the floor, I can just quickly G, B, grab the corner, put it wherever I want. So I recommend you go in and practice by just kind of making a little thing like this. G, B, corner, click, put it right there. Duplicate, G, B, corner, click. And that's how that's working there. Here when you hit G and then B, you can press A to add multiple different snap points, both on the object that you're grabbing and the object that you're snapping it to. And then I just hit Alt A to clear the last snap point if you mess it up. Okay, for this next one, I'm gonna give you some tips for the default workspace. If you're more advanced, you might know most of this, but just I'll keep it really quick here. And this is my most efficient way to open up Blender and just get everything in where exactly where I want right away and just have all the windows where I want. So the default Blender workspace isn't this, but it looks pretty close to something like this. If you bring your cursor to the corner of any window, you'll get this, this little crosshair here. That means you can actually click and drag and open up a new window from there. And then if you want to close it, you just right click between them and hit join right or left. So the way I like mine is I like to have the UV editor somewhere in here. So I like to put it just up here, UV editor. You can keep it pretty small in the corner. I like to have a second viewport down here which if it's not the viewport, you can just go into this menu, find viewport right there, 3D viewport. So this one is gonna be my working viewport. This one I'm gonna keep in camera view only. So to get rid of all this stuff and GUI in the way, you can actually just turn all that stuff off up here. So turn that gizmo off, turn off the overlays, press T to get rid of that menu. So T will get rid of that left side menu, N will bring up and close this menu. To get rid of the header up here, we can actually right click in an empty space and then unclick all this stuff. Don't show tool settings, don't show header. And now it's a perfectly clean uh, render preview as some people call it. Just It's a viewport with just no stuff in the way. And then that, that one I keep from the camera view. So to get it into camera view, just like this, you just press zero on the numpad. So this one, when I'm working, stays in camera view then whatever I do here, if I'm adjusting the focal length or moving the camera around, that is always going to be from the perspective of the final render. Okay, one tip here that you might not be doing that makes just moving stuff around a lot easier is I like to always align the x-axis in my scene to left and right relative to the camera and the y-axis always front and back relative to the camera. Sometimes what happens is you're working on a scene and you accidentally create it from this direction and you have a whole layout and you have all these things in here and then the problem is when you're trying to move anything around you're looking at it from what looks like the front and then you just say i want to move this to the left on the x-axis you hit gx and it's moving it front and back and then you it's just annoying to figure out like which direction am i trying to move it by which button i'm pressing when you line it up this way so sometimes what i'll do is literally just if the scene is halfway done and i forget to do that select all objects and just rotate it 90 degrees this way or negative 90 degrees and then now GX is always going to be left and right. GY is always front and back. And it just it just makes it a lot easier if you're trying to move stuff around quickly to not have to remember like which which one do I press to like go the direction I want. It'll just kind of be muscle memory and just a lot easier to move stuff around by always lining up the X axis to left and right and always lining up the Y axis to front and back. 
once you have the window layout you like, which is actually not this. So I'm actually going to hit join down here. So I like to have the viewport there. I do like a window down here, which I can actually switch, which I can actually switch between the shader editor and the asset browser. And then these ones, you can have it vertical or you can just do this. Like we can join down, split this in half this way, and then have one of them as the outliner, one of them as the properties. That's how I like to have mine, but you can do whatever you want for your workflow. This is just what works best for me. The reason I like this one is because it has everything I need and I don't have to switch between the tabs up here to get whatever I want. So for example, if I want to get to the shader editor, I already have a window open. I can actually just switch this to the shader editor, which brings me to my next tip, which is any letter that you see that's underlined in any menu in Blender, not just this menu, but any menu. Uh, so in, for example, in 3D viewport, the D is underlined. In image editor, the I is underlined. UV editor, U is underlined. You can just hit that letter on the keyboard. So if I want to switch to the UV editor, with this menu open, just hit U on the keyboard. Asset browser, it's A, so just open up the menu. A, shader editor's S. So it makes it really quick to just flip between windows really quickly. The way I use this is I have this kind of just down here. And then when I want to bring in an asset, asset browser, find what I'm looking for, uh, you know, bring in whatever. Get that in the scene. I want to texture it, shader editor, and we're in. Same thing with like, if you're switching between object world, the O is underlined, the W is underlined. You can just hit W, O. It's very easy to switch between stuff like that. Even for the quick favorites, which I'll get to in a second, there's a let underlined letters in there. So you can use the same thing there. Once you have a window layout that you're happy with, you can save this as a default. It's just remember, it's going to save every single setting and thing you have in this entire blend file. So I just have lowered the samples a bit. Um, default light paths. I think I haven't really done anything else. Like all these settings are pretty much default. Just go up to file defaults, save startup file. Then every time you open up blender, it'll be this exact file you have here with the same window layout. Okay. This next one is to quickly just snap objects around the scene. So say we have a bunch of stuff in here that we want to start just moving around the scene and just say, I want to just instantly snap this one to the corner over here, select the object you want cursor down over here. So just shift right click to put the cursor wherever, and then shift S brings up this menu. There's a whole bunch of stuff in here, but the one we want is selection to cursor keep offset. That does that right there. So that works with any object. So say we even have a cluster of things, want it to go over here without moving them around because they're all stacked in a perfect, amazing way. Cursor shift S K does that right there, right? The K is underlined. We can just hit K on the keyboard. Same thing as before. So shift S K does that. So it'll just do it to the origin point, which is why I have the, a lot of the origin points on my models at the very bottom. It lets you just snap it to the floor, wherever that is. So that's a really nice way to do that. So it's really nice if you want to just quickly move stuff around. So shift S and then K in this menu. Okay. You might know this next one, but I have a different way of using it. It's the period key, which will snap you to the currently selected object right there. The problem is this key is on the numpad way on the right hand side of the keyboard. And it's something that I personally press a lot when I'm working on stuff. The way I like to do this is actually set that to be a mouse button shortcut or any other shortcut on your keyboard. You can do that just in edit preferences and then go down to uh, key map. So I believe it's this one right here. If you just type in a dot, like a period in here, find 3D viewport or 3D view, it's frame selected is the numpad period key. Mine's actually the same. I've actually not done it in Blender. I've actually done it from my Logitech mouse settings. So if you, depending on what kind of mouse you have, you might be able to go into the Logitech settings and then change the mouse button to actually be the period key. And then that way it'll just automatically work for everything. The reason I like doing that is because it also works in the outliner. Say we have a ton of objects in here. Like, let me just add um, some cubes, start duplicating this a ton. Okay. So, say we have tons of objects in here and we want to just quickly find one little cube here in the outliner. The way you can do that is actually just hit the period key. It'll snap you there too. And again, I have that tied to my mouse and I, that way it's just nicer because I don't have to take my hand off the keyboard and like, or take my hand off the mouse or keyboard. When I'm working, I can just quickly go in and snap my view to exactly where I want to go without, you know, taking my hand off the thing, finding my mouse again, and then repositioning. So it's just a, a bit faster to work like that, in my opinion. Okay, the next step here is using the quick favorites menu, which is this right here. What this is, is any thing or button that you are repeatedly clicking a lot that's hidden in some menu, you can add to this quick favorites and just quickly hit 
Q, which will bring up that quick favorites menu and let you choose a bunch of your favorite options here. So some useful things that I have on here, say we have a, a texture on this cube and I just wanna, say I'm modeling it and I, I wanna unwrap it quickly. I have in edit mode, cube project with, if you go to U, unwrap, cube project, you can right click this and add it to your quick favorites or assign a shortcut, but either one works. So it's on my quick favorites. So I can just hit Q and then cube project. And that way it'll just instantly unwrap any model that I have. It's just gonna do a basic cube projection, but it works. It's not, uh, just for, for most things, cube project will work very well. And it's it's just a nice shortcut to not have to worry about that at all because it means any model that I'm bringing in here, like if we imagine this wasn't unwrapped and I'm like just putting something on here, edit mode, select all, Q, Q project, done. And that's, uh, that's it. And then you can scale it up on the UV editor, which we have in our default layout now. Some other things I have on here are in object mode. I have this object and data setting right here. What that is, is when you hit shift D, of course, when you go into edit mode and, or you make any modification to one of those copies, see, I just make a little edit there. It's not going to affect the copy. If I hit alt D on an object, so alt D, it looks the same, but if I go into edit mode or I do any change to this object, it's going to do the same on both of those linked copies. So anytime you hit Alt D, they're going to be linked duplicates. It's unclear how to link them though, and it's because it's hidden in this weird menu. You go to, say, say I want to make a change to this one without affecting the other ones. You have to go up to Object, Relations, Make Single User, Object and Data right here. When you click that, it'll now unlink it. The problem is that's really annoying to go into that like three sub menus deep to find it every time because I use it all the time. So that's where you would just go in, find that setting once. So object, relations, make single user, object and data. Right click that and then I recommend just adding it to the quick favorites and then that way you can just hit Q, object and data and now it's unlinked. So you can put whatever you want on here including modifiers. So I have the mirror modifier on here. I can just quickly hit that and I've got a mirror. You can put um, convert to mesh is one I have. So you can just, instead of right clicking convert to mesh, you can just have that on the quick favorites and quickly apply all modifiers at once to any select objects. I have origin to geometry. I have face orientation. It's a bit too many things here, but just the, the quick things like that are just nice to have there. Okay, the next tip here is say we have a scene and I want to move a bunch of different objects closer together all to the middle point all at once without scaling them. So if I hit S and then X, it's going to do that, but it's going to shrink them down and like flatten them at the same time that it's, it's moving them in but it's also shrinking them down. So you can actually go up to this options menu up here. We're in object mode. So options, you can turn on effect only. There's three options here. I'm going to turn on effect only locations. Now, if I hit shit, if I hit S and then scale it in, so I hit S X, same as before, it's going to bring them closer together, but it's not going to actually affect the scale at all because it's only affecting the location. So it's really useful for if you want to just quickly space stuff out and get things kind of or organized in space the way you want them. And then when you're done, you just turn that off. I've actually assigned a shortcut to mine, so I can just hit F and that'll turn it on and off. So that means if I'm just going in here, I can hit F, scale, F to turn off, and now it's scaling properly again. In this menu too, there's also the effect only origins button, which means that if I want to just move the origin point, I can just hit G and it's just going to move the origin point only. Okay, the last one here is useful if you're working on a big scene stuff is getting really complicated and there's tons of different objects and you want to just quickly select everything of the same variant. So for example, if I wanted to select everything in the scene with this rust texture on it or an object that is just a, a direct linked duplicate of this one, there's a shift L menu here for selecting linked objects. So we can select linked object data materials and that's pretty much the only two that I use. So if I hit, since I press alt D on all these, I can hit shift L and then object data that I'll select anything that I pressed Alt D on. That's a linked duplicate. Say we had a bunch of other stuff in the scene that had that rust material on it and there was just stuff everywhere. And I, I didn't want to go through one by one. If we imagine these are unlinked copies too. I didn't want to go one by one and just find and click everything with that rust material. And you know, say I was going to swap this out for a stone material. Let's, just, let's actually do that as an example. So you can go in, click one thing that has that rust material on it, hit Shift L material. And then we can just go in, find the asset browser. I'm just going to go to my textures folder in Polyhaven here. I'll just find this one here and say I want to put this on it. Drop that on. And then I can hit Control L 
to link material. So now it's anything with that Rust material will just instantly switch to whatever other material I want. So again, that's just Shift L material. We'll select anything with that same material on it. So th those two Shift L object data and Shift L material are both very useful for selecting just collections of stuff that have similar properties to them. So that's pretty much it for this one. If you want full step-by-step -step guides on how to create these environments right here, go and check out my cyber environments course. If you're interested in like cyberpunk and city renders, that's actually where these models here, these pipes are from. It's from that course. So link below to that if you want it. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.